A Guide to the Adventures of Antoine Duinel. This article has been written by Jacqueline Postagian. Revisiting the enduring delight of Truffaut's saga of cinema's most flawed but lovable everyman. Regarde ton fils. Quel enfariné. Ta sœur, je n'ai pas envie de plaisanter. Ah, tiens, moi qui croyais justement. 1959's The 400 Blows is arguably the film that brought international attention to French New Wave, leading the movement to soar and flourish in the years to come. Francois Truffaut's directorial debut, he was previously a revered critic of the Cahiers du Cinema, tells the story of a Parisian adolescent, Antoine Donnell, as he tries to find his place in the world while dealing with affectionless and absent parents, totalitarian school staff, and dabbling in a life of petty crime. L'algèbre, la science, ça sert à peu de gens dans la vie. Mais le français, hein? Le français. The film is semi-autobiographical. Truffaut himself never knew his father, having been adopted by his mother's husband and had a rebellious childhood while finding comfort in books and film. Duanel, played by Jean-Pierre Lourdes, would go on to become Truffaut's cinematic alter ego as the director decided to subsequently revisit his life and story four times after the foreign blows. Duanel is sometimes called the French everyman. For two decades, audiences around the world followed him through his first love, military service, workplace struggles, marriage and divorce as he struggles to find contentment. Over 40 years since last seeing him in Love on the Run, the legacy of Truffaut's saga is as powerful as ever, and cinema lovers repeatedly watch Duanel make mistake after mistake and love him. Anyway, despite being called an everyman, Antoine de Noël is undoubtedly an outsider. His rough upbringing leads him to have serious affection and commitment issues in his love and professional lives. Despite falling in love very powerfully, almost obsessively, he can't seem to make a relationship last. After having a terrible experience in school, he vouches for independence and do-it-yourself education, leading him to try many different jobs, and we as audience members know he is unfit for. His love of reading is present from the first film, but he is never able to turn that passion into a viable career. One is tempted to wonder whether if he had a traditional education maybe he could have developed as a writer. However, it's not our job to guess but to watch these 20 year long unsentimental portraits of a man's life and accept him for what he is. All the specifically meant to compliment Richard Linklater's medi mediations on cinema and time, video essayist Koganada features Duanel in a video on the topic. The saga remains one of the most beautiful examples we have of the camera's ability to represent the passage of time and with the human nature, how it is affected by time, how it changes or doesn't change accordingly. The 400 Blows 1959, Truffaut's first feature ranks 39 on Sight and Sound's greatest films of all time. You can hear its praises to be sung pretty much anywhere you look, and yes, it really is that good. If you are looking to get into the French New Wave but don't know where to start, the 400 Blows is your best bet. It's accessible but ostentatious, heartbreaking but fun. 14-year-old Duanel's troubles are enough to last him a lifetime, and the beauty of this first film is equal in the form as well. The unforgettable last five minutes in and of themselves are legendary.
Antoine and Colette 1962. Truffaut returned to Duanel for a short film to be part of the Lover 20 anthology project. The 32-minute film Antoine and Colette features Antoine as a teenager estranged from his parents, living alone and working in a record factory. He meets Colette and is soon smitten with her as well as her loving parents. This fascination with his love, interests, families will continue throughout the series in Love on the Run. He even admits, I don't just fall in love with a girl, I fall in love with her whole family, reflecting his admiration and longing for a stable domestic life. Stolen Kisses, 1968. Stolen Kisses opens with Antoine as a young adult, newly discharged as unfit from the military. He is in love with another girl, Christine, also from a nice family, a polite and pretty violin player. Like many disillusioned 20-something-year-olds, he goes from job to job trying to figure out his place in society. By the end, he still hasn't exactly found it. However, Christine has finally decided to give their relationship a shot and for Antoine, that's all that really matters. Well, uh, do you read American newspapers? I prefer poetry to prose. A lot of it plays out like a sitcom, specifically his stint as a private detective. It's definitely the lightest of the series, but no less enjoyable for that. As if to continue the analogy that Donnell is Truffaut's alter ego, it was on set of Stolen Kisses that the director fell in love with the actress Claude Jade, which depicts Christine in the series. The couple was engaged but ended the relationship before marriage. Oui. Allo Ida Salut, Antoine. Bonjour, c'est Antoine là sur l'affaire Cendrillon. Alors, Monsieur Tabar est surnommé le dinosaure par son personnel. Ah, j'ai fait la connaissance de Madame Tabar. Bed and Board, 1970. Now married, the domestic highs and lows of Christine and Antoine center this wonderful sequel, Bed and Board. We see Antoine and Christine have a son, he loses yet another job, and the couple separate due to Antoine's flexibility with a Japanese woman he met through work. Now faced with the responsibility of being a father and heading a household, having had zero experience of the phenomenon of paternity in his past, we see Antoine's worst traits come up. Oh, je suis Ah oui, en effet, oui. Bah, tu peux pas encore me prêter 5000 comme ça. Ah bah ça oui, mais avec plaisir. Et puis je te oui, oui, oui. Not being able to communicate with loved ones is present in the previous films, but due to the increase in stakes in Bed and Board, his stubbornness and relentless really take shape. All his issues are summarized when he tells Christine, "You're my little sister, my daughter, my mother," and she responds, "I would have liked to be a wife too." What's fascinating about the film are these moments of tenderness, despite Antoine being at his least likable. The film calls from the restaurant and the cinematic humanity of Antoine, a person who met as a child, now holding a child of his own. Love on the Run 1979, the final installment in the story of Antoine Donnell sees him about to be divorced from Christine and dating a younger woman. It plays out a bit like the 100th episode of a TV series, where interludes of footage from previous films play throughout. The saga is truly Antoine's story, however Love on the Run gives us an opportunity to peek into the brains of the women he has loved. He is reunited with his first love, Colette, who calls out his obsessive egotistical behavior and how he tries to force people to love him. Le puzzle s'est reconstitué et j'ai vu apparaître un visage de femme. Et je suis tombé amoureux. Oui, amoureux fou. She articulates the conflict so concisely that he is only interested in the beginnings of relationships and that you can't make everyone else pay for your rotten childhood. When Christine finally has a chance to ask Colette about her life, there is a moment of uncharacteristic despair not present in any of the previous films. It's as if to say that Antoine may be the protagonist of the saga, but the story of one man exists in the background of countless other lives, including the audiences. Bonne raison de penser qu'à chaque fois que vous mentionnez la fille des jeunesses musicales, c'est pas c'est de moi dont il s'agit, non? It's a moment to exist our curiosity with this character and register the strategies that may have been happening while we escape both fiction and real. For all his faults, Antoine Donnell remains one of Simmer's most 
beloved characters. Watch him grow up before your eyes and you will experience a phenomenon of manipulation of time and feelings only possible through film. Thank you.